Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. All right. We're back. We're making an... We're watching another video today. We're doing most disturbing moments on police dash cam. And we're going in the cliff area. Oh, boy. Ooh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Let's go. Around 1.30 p.m. on October 15th of 2020, the Seattle Police Department received a call about a strange man walking around with a burning stick. First-year officer burning Caleb Pomazon responded to the scene and found the man walking up and down an alley in South Lake Union. He was, indeed, carrying a large flaming stick. One might call it a flaming staff. A guy like that probably has no interest in talking to the audio, police. Yikes. Officer Pomazon learned that lesson the hard way when he called the man and told him to stop. He's just walking down the alley southbound with the stick on fire. And it is very on fire. Unless it's too loud. Hey, Seattle police, stop! It sounds highly glitchy on my end. It's not glitchy on my end. Is it glitch glitchy for anyone else? Seattle police, stop, dude! Okay, that sounds all right now. Found oh, a stick on the ground, and now I'm gonna use it. All this power that I found, gonna totally abuse it. Dude, I hit so much stuff, do not get into my way, because I found a stick, and I'm using it today. I got a stick, got a stick. Me. <laughs> Right now. Per YouTube policy, we okay. decided not to show what happened next. The man, later identified as Why is it always you freaking Brian me out with stuff? Charged Officer Pomazon with his fire staff and stuck it through the open door. To protect himself, Officer Pomazon drew and fired his service weapon, causing Lael to flee the scene. According to reports, Lael was not struck by any bullets. Before the fire staff incident, witnesses saw Lael attacking a man with a hammer a few blocks away in Denny Park. A group of people jumped on him and grabbed the hammer, at which point Lael ran away, grabbed a giant piece of lumber, and set it on fire. As for Officer Pomazon, he escaped out the passenger door oh with minor burns on his leg. Meanwhile, his car went up in flames, costing the city of Seattle about $70,000. He then chased Lael to a parking garage and subdued him with a taser. In the end, Lael was charged with first and second degree assault. He should be charged with a lot more than just that, but all right. On September 23rd of 2018, Derek Gooden of Dayton Beach, Florida, gave Derek new Gooden meaning was to not the phrase good. caught red-handed. On the ground right now. Get the Wait. Out. Main Street Bridge. Wait, what do you do? Another male over the bridge. I got one at gunpoint. He said jumped over the bridge. <laughs> on the ground. Get on your belly right now. Get on your belly right now. Get on your belly right now. On your belly right now. Get your phone in the water. Man, cops really do take their job serious. You just threw a male over the bridge. He jumped over the bridge. I watched you. I'm right here. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, tell me, bro. Explain this shit, dog. Because I would just go across the way, dog. What the f? Yeah, he's coming. Yes, sir. I'm a handcuff. He just threw that dude over the bridge, bro. No, I did not. I'm not even asking. It's on camera. Please, I want you to have a. Your cotton body cam. Insulting me, dog. And then when I came up, he, he, he's going to get charged with destruction of evidence, too, because he just threw a bunch of in the water as soon as I fall. Well, what are you charging him with, dog? I'm charging him with the whole time. I'm charging with attempted murder. As the story oh. goes, Derek was riding his bike over the Main Street Bridge in Daytona Beach when he stopped to talk to a woman. According to the police report, the two argued over a prior money exchange, at which point Derek struck her in the face. That's when Anthony Mascaro stepped in to help the woman, leading to a fist fight. Okay. Our officer happened to be driving by when the fight started, but arrived a second too late. Anthony fell 30 feet into the Halifax River, somehow avoiding the pylons and catwalks under the bridge. Thankfully, he landed safely and swam to a nearby buoy, where he was rescued by a man in a rowboat. A buoy. He only <laughs> suffered a small cut above his eye and refused to press charges against Derek. But that didn't really matter. 
Police still charged Derek with aggravated I would have pressed charges. He could have easily hurt himself or worse during the fall. Who wouldn't press charges? Sun Prairie, Wisconsin is a small city in Dane County, about 14 miles northeast of Madison. It's home to about 36,000 people who all heard a massive boom on July 10th of 2018. It began when the local fire department was called to a possible gas leak. Residents reported the smell of natural gas, meaning the whole area was about to become a ticking time bomb. Firefighters like Captain Corey Barr knew how dangerous the situation was. He worked tirelessly to get everyone to safety moments before the block went kaboom. Kablam. Oh, that's not a kablam. That's a... That's a massive boom. I don't think we've ever had anything go kaboom in Ireland. That boom, that's boom. Boom is cool. Boom is pretty cool. As long as there is no casualties, boom is cool. Sadly, Captain Barr, along with two other firefighters, were still inside the blast zone when the building exploded. Damn it. Passed away after getting There's caught casualties. Under the rubble. Another now it's no longer cool. became stuck, but was thankfully rescued and brought to the hospital in critical condition. According to reports, the gas leak was due to a miscommunication between contractors. One oh, of them accidentally struck a gas line while digging underground. All it took was a tiny spark to nearly blow up an entire city block. The explosion destroyed cool. a bar, no, a pizzeria, not, not cool. and cool several anymore. apartments above Hush. the businesses. In December of 2018, <laughs> authorities in Sun Prairie decided not to press criminal charges against those involved in the leak. They never learned what set off the explosion, and they likely never will. Dude, some contractors, not all, some, this is very few, some contractors are so bad at their job. eggs are so expensive these days, look no further than this video from the Utah Department of Public Safety. On March 2nd of 2022, around 10 a.m., a Utah State Trooper stopped a semi-truck on I-80 westbound for a move-over violation. Lucky for him, he decided to approach from the passenger side door. He wouldn't be alive to tell this story if he'd gone around the other side. Uh, okay. Oh. That was a hard hit, too. We have 1050 rollover, semi blocking both lanes. Expedite fire. We got lane shut down. Now let's see that again from the dash cam in our trooper's car. Three, two, one, now. Oh, you can hear it. Yeah, he definitely wouldn't have survived that. Holy. Luckily, our trooper and the two truck drivers he initially pulled over were unharmed during the crash. Without hesitation, he ran to check on the occupants of a black SUV and another semi-truck driver. <clears throat> Run, Copper, run. I bet Forrest okay? comes faster than him. You can't. Are you okay? Are you okay? Can you? We gotta get out. Stay here for your protection, okay? Help coming. She cannot breathe. 12 436. Got one vehicle, two occupants, 1085 Bravo Charlie. Can you, all right, just stay right here, okay? I need you to talk to each other and keep each other awake, okay? 339, are you involved as well? Affirm my vehicle got rear-ended, but I wasn't in it. Oh, what's in the boxes? I copy, I'm in route. 12436, semi is in the median. Uh, it is on fire, and we have small explosions going off. 
semi appears I've been transporting eggs. Are you okay? Wait, in the boxes is a bunch of eggs. You're okay? Is there anybody else inside the vehicle? No. Okay, why don't you come over here? Come across the road, okay? According to reports, semi truck number two was carrying a load of eggs when it came upon semi truck number one on the roadside. The driver tried to change lanes, but didn't see the passenger car on his left. He struck the car, swerved back, and rear ended the police SUV. Ooh. Somehow, the egg truck driver escaped without injury moments before his cab went up in flames. As for the passengers in the wrecked SUV, they sustained what police call Bravo and Charlie injuries meaning they were in poor and critical condition. Damn. Kenosha, Wisconsin is the fourth largest city in the state. Kenosha? It's home to about 100,000 people, including an 84-year-old man who owes these two officers his life. It was shortly after 9 p.m. on April 25th of 2023. Several calls came into the Kenosha Police Department about a minivan driving down Sheridan Road with a flat tire. Two officers responded to the scene, not knowing they were about to become firefighters. Oh, jeez. Yeah, mate, you're leaving a trail of fire. Their car turned into Ghost Rider. <laughs> this is the part where you stop driving. This dash cam quality is so bad. Oh, can't show it. It's blacked out, which means it's not good. Hot Wheels. <laughs> Hot Wheels newest edition. Officers Jacob Thorpe and Cody Cox, both relatively new to the force, didn't even blink when the van caught fire. They ran toward danger and pulled the elderly driver to safety. By some miracle, all three men walked away without requiring hospitalization. They did suffer Lucky. some singed hair and a few minor burns, but it uh, wasn't anything some They just got a free haircut from the car fire. They're fine. Lieutenant Joe Nozelik commended his officers <laughs> for their bravery, saying, This could have been so much worse. Our selfless officers ran towards the fire to save that man. According to the lieutenant, the man wasn't intoxicated and didn't show any signs of diminished mental capacity. However, Nozalik called his decisions questionable, saying he just wanted to make it home. He just wanted to go home. That's all he wanted. On November 17th of 1987, 29-year-old Richard McNair took a man's life and severely wounded another during a botched robbery in Minot, North Dakota. Oh, he shit. remained at large for three months until February of 1988, when police brought him in for questioning. He was a bit of color and given exactly two life sentences for murder and attempted murder. McNair tried multiple times to escape from prison. In 1992, he crawled through a ventilation duct and remained at large for 10 months. Wow. They brought him back to jail in Louisiana, where he spent 13 more years plotting his next move. On April 5th of 2006, he put his master plan into motion and escaped once more. Oh my Hours God. after the escape, and police skin across Louisiana Just were on high alert for McNair. That's when Officer Carl Bordelon spotted a suspicious man jogging near the railroad tracks. Where do you live at? Down the road by uh, Pineville. Pineville? Uh-huh. Okay. Do you have any form of identification on you? No, man. What's your name? Robert, Robert Jones. Robert Jones? Uh-huh. Why well, I'm not supposed to be on the tracks? No, that's not the problem right now. Where you, what's your address? I don't have an address. I'm at the hotel. We're working on uh, houses and stuff. I got the roofing. Everyone has an address. Come on. Roofing? Yep. Okay. For my brother. All right. Oh. He, doesn't, he doesn't believe him. What is? We got an escapee. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Where from? A prison. Obviously a prison. Yeah. While Officer Bordelon chats with the escapee, 
let's talk about how McNair wrote and executed his own version of the Shawshank Redemption. Sure, One let's hear the McNair's backstory. One of prison duties involved working in the manufacturing ward, where he specialized in repairing old mailbags. In secret, McNair used his manufacturing privileges to build what can only be described as an escape pod with a breathing tube. <laughs> he then hid that pod inside a wooden pallet full of mailbags. Wow. The pallet was shrink-wrapped and placed on a forklift. Then, it was taken to a nearby warehouse outside the prison walls with McNair still inside. Once everyone left, McNair emerged from his pod and walked out the front door. It wasn't long before he crossed paths with Officer Bordelon, who had no idea he was talking to the man he was looking for. <laughs> let me, let me just bear Not in the area, lots of people travel to work. Oh, let okay. Me bear that. If so, I'll just cut him loose. All right, thanks. I guarantee I'm not no You know the bad thing about it? What's that? You'll match it up to him. Come on. <laughs> well, that sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, what are you saying at? That uh, Titus Bill or Titus Inn? Titus Inn? A little old. A little old. Uh, Where's that at? I don't even know the address. We just got into town about a week ago, and he dropped me off to jog. I always jog about 12 miles a day. Where'd he drop you off at? Up there on that road by, uh, there's some construction going on up there. Some houses. So there's construction going up there and the construction going at the hotel he's staying at. The story just doesn't isn't adding up in my opinion. Who do y'all work for? It is it's his uh I know what's the name of the company? Fields Roofing. Okay. Did you go through a briar patch or something? Well yeah, roofing. I always roof in shorts and cut my uh scratching up on you know the roofing. That's why your knees are all cut up. Yeah. Or y'all got pads. He doesn't believe them. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't believe him. Um, I already know the story. I don't believe him. Where are you from? Huh? Where originally? Dallas, Texas. I mean, that's where you y'all yeah, stay. Out of. out of Dallas, Texas. So, what's your name again? Jimmy Jones. After the police officer lost right. the lucky position? draw yeah, and I'm in not, it. I know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not you throwing you against her. <laughs> Imagine. Hey, you wouldn't believe what them guys do. One in a million. Did you catch that at the end there? McNair said his name was Jimmy Jones, even though he identified himself as Robert Jones earlier. It was subtle, but Officer Bordelon should have caught it. Besides, if he were an escaped convict, he would have run by now. Um, I promise you. I'm Robert not Jimmy Jones. It's, it's, it's his middle name. <laughs> you know that yourself. <laughs> You'd have done wrong by now. No. Well, if you can't verify, I mean, I'll be at the... Did you see anybody or anything? There's some kids up there playing. That's all you saw? Yeah, the kids. And those that you that blew your siren? Uh-uh. There's a siren, and then some kids were screaming, some little kids playing on the tracks. And, uh, the oh, guy... I probably told them to get off of them. Oh, did you? Well... Can I jog on them? Because this is the only I way don't I care, okay, personally. this is the only way I know how to get back. Don't get run over by a train. There isn't any. <laughs> that's why I picked this. I'm place. sure you can hear him way in advance. Yeah, but that's why these are rusted, right? For a train? They go down this road? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. See, I saw it rusted. And I thought, <laughs> he didn't know yeah, they go down that road. Wow. Well. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, they'll come. Not as much as our other track. Our other it's track about every hour. Thanks, sir. I'm sorry to have to hold you up. But All right. No, I'm just doing my job, man. I know you are. But, um, yeah. So, does he get away? Be careful. You'll probably get stopped again, okay? okay. Don't, don't be alarmed by it. More line. Yeah. Okay, you'll be on till, well, this shift. I'll be all until we find this on gun. In the end, Officer Bordelon lets McNair go. The wow. fugitive fled to Canada, where he avoided police until his recapture in October of 2007. Since then, <laughs> he's been locked up at McCreary Prison in Kentucky. It's unclear if Officer Bordelon was ever disciplined for letting McNair get away. He didn't in his know. defense, the only photo he had was grainy and six months old. Even McNair admitted that the picture looked nothing like him. That's not the cop's fault, let's be real. High-speed police chases don't always end peacefully. Most times, the suspect pushes their luck, loses control, and crashes into something. Sadly, that something usually involves an innocent driver going about their business. Take this chase through a small oh neighborhood in Seattle, Washington, for example. Around 3.45 p.m. on June 6th of 2015, several witnesses called 911 after seeing a man reach inside a parked car and stealing someone's purse. They watched him flee in a getaway vehicle, which police eventually spotted in a parking lot later on. 
The driver peeled out, leading our lone officer on a dangerous chase through a residential area. And the chase was on. In that cliff area, it's a very narrow road as well, so kind of makes sense why he got reckless and crashed. If you think about it. Did he crash twice? Or is this... Said he crashed on the cliff though. Stop right there, buddy! Stop right there! I will... I will shoot you! I will shoot you! Get back here now! Get back here now! Right now! Always with the threats of the gun. <laughs> Now let's see that one more time. Watch how the white car flips and sticks the landing. Meanwhile, the suspect <laughs> surprising SUV on the road. On I know, right? And starts smoking. Our officer catches up with one of the suspects off camera and arrests him. He suffered a few minor injuries in the crash, but was otherwise okay. According to reports, he was a known thief involved in several local robberies. It's unclear if police ever found the other passenger. Reports about the crash only reference a single suspect. We also don't believe anyone was in the white car when it flipped. There are no reports of Fair. further injuries, and our officer ran by it after the crash. If there was somebody inside, he would have stopped to make sure they were okay. Oh, I thought we were going by the cliffside. Bullock County, Georgia is a cluster of towns and cities in the southeastern part of the state. It's home to about 70,000 people who fall under the jurisdiction of the Bullock County Sheriff's Department. All of them are lucky they have someone like Sergeant Ray Rodriguez. Must have been another clip from a different video. Maybe. Of 2016, I'll Sergeant find that Rodriguez one. I'll make it my duty to find that one. When a call came in about a traffic accident on private property. When he arrived on the scene, he found a 10-year-old boy stuck under a large ATV. It flipped in such a way that it was crushing the boy's neck. In that instant, Ooh. Sergeant Rodriguez knew it was up to him to save the boy's life. Well, someone's got to save him. We don't have, we don't have captions, do we, for this? I need help here now. He needs help. Wait, are they going to flip the car back over, or... Seems like that's what they're doing. Flipping it to his car and then to put it back on all fours. His plan was simple. He's hoping the tow strap is strong enough to flip the ATV back on its wheels. If it is, then he'll save the boy's life. If not, well, Sergeant Rodriguez didn't want to think about it. Yeah, that's the last thing you want to think about. Oh. There you go. I mean, those things are pretty... I wouldn't say they're light, but no, they're not as heavy as a car. Uh, Thankfully, his plan worked. He rushed to check on the boy and stayed with him until help arrived. He was eventually airlifted to the hospital where doctors stabilized him. For his heroic actions, Sergeant Rodriguez received the life-saving medal and was nominated for Georgia Deputy of the Year. More Damn. importantly, he had the eternal gratitude of the boy's mom. Without a doubt, yeah. <laughs> On June 8th of 2023, officers in Deltona, Florida received a panicked call from a distressed woman. According to her, the next door neighbor's kid was drowning in the pool. Police oh. flew into action. Whoever got there first would likely have to save this kid's life. That's why it's critical that you stop and let the police pass. You never know whose life is on the line. Well, isn't it like illegal to block cops with a siren? Never mind, someone crashed into the cops. You're okay. I'm, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You're fine. It was an accident. We're all alive. Thankfully, nobody was seriously injured during the crash. As for the civilian who hit our officers, it's unclear if he was charged with any crimes. The plot thickened well, I mean, when police can reached they the scene really of the child. As it turns out, there was no pool. 
there wasn't even a body of water anywhere near the house. The huh. panicked woman, identified as 47-year-old Fabila Robles, never saw anything. According to her neighbor, she had been complaining about the children playing in the backyard all day. <laughs> when they wouldn't quiet down, she decided to call the police. But uh -huh. instead of filing a noise complaint, she said the kids were drowning. In the end, Fabila wound up getting herself arrested for misuse of 911. Police effectively <laughs> blamed her for the T-bone crash. If she had just called in a noise complaint, they wouldn't have been in such a rush to get there. At least they got some charge. Yorba Linda, California is a small city in northeastern Orange County. It's home Yorba to about 68,000 people living about 37 miles southeast of downtown LA. On April 22nd of 2012, a Yorba Linda officer was doing stationary patrol when he noticed something strange in the distance. Did the sidewalk just explode? I swear, Americans have the weirdest names for their areas. Sometimes it's not easy to see them coming and hearing things such Hearing things, sounds can seem like they are coming from other directions. Well, I know that, yeah. Now, they don't know it yet, but an underground electrical vault short-circuited, leading oh to the explosion. Think of these vaults as small rooms full of thick wires, heavy-duty power strips, and transformers. You'll find them in urban areas like Yorba Linda, and, and they, they often have easy access doors, allowing maintenance crews to get down there and work on them. Of course, to these police officers, it's just a large smoking hole in the ground. Can't they ca catch fire? Like, a, that's an electric fire, right? It gets worse. Yep, there you go. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I knew it was going to happen. And again. Is it going to happen a third time? Three strikes and you're out. Oh god. Did he get hit the hardest? And it's going again. Tree strikes and you're out. Both firefighters were transported to a nearby hospital for minor injuries. Thankfully, their protective gear kept them safe when the vault exploded in their faces, sending one of them flying 10 feet. It's oh. unclear what caused I didn't the even see that. All we know is that thousands of people were left without power until the electric company could solve the problem. Oh, you'd want to hope America has fast uh, electric June 12th, company response. 2023. Police officers in Pierce County, Washington, have just located a stolen car in the parking lot of a local strip mall. We didn't have we actually didn't have any major chases in this video. Maybe this will be the one. The driver allegedly carjacked a woman at gunpoint near Orange Gate Park in Tacoma. Oh, Even wow. though he fled the scene, an air tag in her car led police right to him. That's to say, no matter how hard he tries, he'll never get away. Not of course as not. long as that air tag is still active. <laughs> There's an air tag on him. 
any little movement of electrical sparks, like cracked wires, little bits of rainfall can set those off. Really? That simple to set those things off? Oh my god. They need to have um, better protective gear around those wires then. Traffic congestion allows the suspect to escape momentarily. Thankfully, another officer passed through and joined the pursuit at the intersection. Our officer <laughs> spends goes. a few minutes tailing behind the police SUV. Eventually, he takes over as the lead car as the chase enters a more rural area. These narrow residential roads dial up the danger several notches. Oh wait, maybe this is the cliff one. It just may be. Add, nope. Yep, happened in our house, our last house, our bum ass. Battle Lord fixed our garage with shorty, shoddy wires, and when it rained, it sparked off and knocked our power out. What an idiot. How did you not know the wires were shit? You did say he was pretty stupid. I remember that. Nope, oh, he's swerving. He's swerving. Our officer follows the carjacker onto the right shoulder, then across all three lanes. He's waiting for the inevitable moment when that back right tire falls off. Then it finally happens. Oh, the tire finally falls off. <laughs> Runaway tire. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> this chase won't last much longer. Our officer knows it, and our suspect knows it. Listen closely as both cars veer back into the breakdown lane. We can't tell if these are gunshots or just debris bouncing off our officer's car. I doubt they go for shots. Yeah, that's debris hitting off the car. Have a nice day is normal. Enjoy enjoy your 24 hours is a little psycho Whatever like. That was, it forced our okay, so yeah, so it's like back enjoy your last day or something. Catches up moments before the car jack causes now. a major traffic accident. That beeping actually drives me insane. Also, it's not a fact. I'm dumb. That's not a fact. Once again, our officer gets stuck behind civilian cars that won't move. Lucky for him, another police SUV swoops in and takes the lead. We'll follow this car up until the end when he pit maneuvers the suspect onto the side of the road. Guess we know he pits him. That was the fastest five minutes ever, or snoozing and go away. 
we are going to have to run an ad before we start the game, just so we don't get an ad during another hour. Oh god. <laughs> this cops listen to music. <laughs> nice music, copper. Real good taste. Nope, we're back in the radio. Is the car on fire? Now they may have the suspect in custody, but Guys, now police have bigger problems. The car's on, on fire. The dry grass catches fire. And to make things worse, there's a woman trapped inside the stolen car. Oh That's shit. That's right. Our street hard car thief left his girlfriend to perish in the fire. Thankfully, officers were able to pull her out. I can't take them serious with their radio. Yeah, get your cop cars and back out. I wonder if she got any burns. Despite their best efforts, the car is still on fire. It's also growing in the grass and has now spread to the police cruisers. All oh they can do now is wait for the fire department to arrive. But even they have trouble putting this blaze out. Really? Oh god, the radio's gone to 10 speed. Funny thing, the girlfriend probably still loves him and would do anything for him. Possibly. And if she does, she's insane. Not you. After a long battle, the fire department finally gets everything under control. We never learn the carjacker's name, but we do know that he was charged with first degree robbery, unlawful possession of a firearm, and identity theft. They said his identity bail theft? was $250,000. As for the female passenger, she suffered minor smoke inhalation and was treated at the local hospital. It's unclear if she was involved in the carjacking or was an unwilling participant. If you enjoyed this video and want to see I'd another say she was like unwilling it, participant. be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time. Later.